Hi, this is Start 3D Modeling Channel. In this video, I will show you how to create such a part in Plasticity. In this example, I just want to show you a few basic operations for creating 3D solids in this system. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please subscribe. Let's start a new project. Here, I will begin by creating a box. Select the center box option. If you have a different option selected here, hover the cursor over this command, press and hold the left mouse button, and then hover the cursor over the center box command. Now this option is active, hover the cursor over the origin of the coordinate system, and a snap will be displayed here. Click the left mouse button to place the center of the box at this point. Now press the tab key to specify the dimensions of the cube, Type 100, then press tab again, and type 70. Press enter to confirm, and now let's add the height of the cube. We can do this by dragging or simply entering a specific value. To enter a specific value, press H on the keyboard, and type 70 to set the height of the box to 70 millimeters. Press enter to confirm and enter again to finish this command. We have such a box. Now we switch to edge selection. We can click this icon or we can press the two key on the keyboard. With the shift key, select these two edges. Here, as you can see, this edge is not visible in this view, but I can still select it. This is because I have the X-ray mode turned on, which allows selecting edges that are not visible in this view We click the full button to add rounding in this way, and click OK. Now I select the circle drawing option. This option is here, I have another option selected, so I hover over this command, press and hold the left mouse button, and then hover over this command, and release the mouse button. Now this command is selected, Draw a circle at this point. Here we have the active center face snap, but it is also the center of the circle. I click the left mouse button, then press tab and type 20 millimeters as the diameter of the circle. I press enter to confirm, and now I switch to face selection. We can click this icon or press the three key on the keyboard. I prefer using keys because it is faster. Once you work a bit in plasticity, you will notice that using keyboard shortcuts and activating commands with the appropriate keys significantly speeds up 3D model creation. OK, now I'm selecting this circle, and we'll add an extrusion through the entire solid so that we can remove material from this solid based on this extrusion. To do this, press the W key on the keyboard and specify this solid as the solid from which we will remove material. Click OK to confirm. I will also turn on edge visibility. I click the right mouse button here and click the show edges button. OK, so that these edges are visible. And now I switch to the side view. And I would like to create a rectangle based on which I will remove material, but I want to do it in such a way that after removal there will be a model with walls 10 millimeters thick. To do this, I will create some auxiliary geometry. I select the line drawing command and draw a line from this point with a length of 10 millimeters. So I press tab, type 10, and now I click the left mouse button because I don't want to finish drawing this line. Here I also press tab, type 10, then tab again and as an angle 90 degrees and enter. I have something like this. Now, this line is selected. I choose the mirror command to create the same from this side. I click OK. Now I select the rectangle drawing command. I select to draw this rectangle and place the first corner of the rectangle here. As for the second corner, I must place the second corner somewhere outside the solid because I will remove material from this solid based on this rectangle, but this corner must lie at the height of this line. To do this precisely, I hover over this line, press the shift key, 
and now the auxiliary lines are activated, which facilitate drawing the geometry. OK, I close the view on this plane and now based on this rectangle, we will remove material from this solid. That is, I drag the rectangle through the entire solid. At this moment, the length does not matter at all. I press the W key to specify that I want to remove material and select the solid from which I will be removing material. Click OK to confirm. And we have something like this. Now I select all flat geometries and turn off the visibility of these geometries. Then I select this face and press the spacebar to activate the temporary construction plane. Here I choose to draw a circle. I place the center of the circle at this point, press tab to specify the diameter of this circle, and type in 50 millimeters as the diameter, press enter. Then I select to draw another circle again. As you can see, we can activate the drawing of a circle using the keyboard shortcut shift plus C, so I press shift plus C and draw the next circle. Diameter of the circle 30 millimeters, enter. Then I press shift plus C again and draw another circle with a diameter of 20 millimeters. Okay. I have three such circles. I close the temporary construction plane. And now I select this area and add an extrusion of 10 millimeters here. That is, I press the D key, type 10, hit enter, and enter again to finish this command. And here, note that a new solid has been created. If we wanted to create the extrusion in such a way that it is connected to the previous part of the solid, we can also do that. I press Ctrl Z to undo that. OK, I select this area, add an extrusion, press D to specify the length of the extrusion as 10 millimeters, and here we can use the union operation. I press the Q key, and then select the solid to which this piece of the solid will be attached. Here, I had to click on this solid twice. I click OK to confirm, and now this piece of the solid has been automatically connected to this solid. Next, I select this circle, add a downward extrusion to create a hole in the solid. I press the W key and select this solid as the solid from which I will be removing material. I click OK to confirm and turn off the visibility of flat geometries. Then I press the 2 key to switch to edge selection. And with the Shift key, I select these edges. Here we add rounding, I press the D key and then 5 to specify the radius value as 5 millimeters, and press enter to confirm, and press enter again to finish this command. Next I select this edge, press D, then the 2 key, hit enter, and enter again. Now with the shift key, I select this edge, this edge, and this edge, and here I want to add a chamfer, so I press the C key, then press the 1 key to specify the dimension of the chamfer, and press enter to confirm, and enter again to finish this command. And that's how we created such a solid. In this example, I wanted to show you a few basic operations for creating 3D solids in plasticity. If it turns out that you need to change something in this model, we can easily do that. If we want to change, for example, the diameter of the circle, we switch to face selection, press the 3 key on the keyboard, select this circle, and here we can change the diameter of this circle. If you want to do this precisely, press escape. The face is selected, and I press the equal sign. Here I can enter a new diameter value. If, for example, you would like to increase the distance between these faces, we can also do that. To do this, with the Shift key, I select these two faces, 
and choose the move command, so I press the G key on the keyboard. Now we can change the distance between these two faces. If you want to do it symmetrically, we will move it in this direction by 5 millimeters. OK. Now I select this face and this face, doing this with the Shift key, press the G key to activate the move command, and here in the X direction, we move it by minus 5 millimeters. And in this way, we increase the distance between these faces by 10 millimeters. If it turns out that we need to move this piece of the solid, we can also easily do that. Simply select the faces you want to move with the Shift key. Here I will select all the faces that correspond to this piece of the solid. We do this with the Shift key. Now I activate the Move command, that is, I press the G key. And for example, in the X axis, I would like to move it by 5 millimeters in the positive direction, so I press the X key, then the 5 key, hit Enter, and Enter again. And in this way, we move this piece of the solid. So, as you can see, even though we don't have an operation history that is known from other 3D CAD systems, we can still make precise changes to the 3D model. We just don't do it on parameters. Instead, we make changes directly on the model. When it comes to making such changes in plasticity, it is really convenient and works very well. We will finish this lesson here. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to this channel.